beginning early this morning on the protection of access credentials. And to that aim, I'm going to invite my colleagues, Abreu Averrosa um, and Graciela Martinez of uh, LACNIC uh, um, CSER that uh, are going to be in charge of this space. No, de la mano. Ah, ya, ya hay una silla. Si quieres, un Hola, buenos días. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Well, here, for instance, that we are used uh, to watching series. Um, today, we are, are going to give you a summary of uh, the first uh, season, and then I'm going to leave you with Alfredo, who will give you uh, a scoop of what's coming in the second season. Do you remember this chart that we showed uh, in uh, May? Well, now we update it, and this is from January to August. We have 360 access credentials to LACNIC uh, um, uh, that are uh, compromised and uh, for sale in the black market. This is very high. So I wanted to show you that of those credentials that we uh, have for sale, 43% correspond to uh, Milaknik uh, access credentials. Do you remember that in May we told you that Oracle uh, Orange had a problem? Well, we had one and we continue to have it, but fortunately the organizations that were affected didn't have a great impact. Not at least they didn't uh, uh, make the internet crash in any countries, but we know that that can be done. So what we request again is to please check your accounts and your passwords, because do you remember that we talked about the malware that was designed to uh, steal our credentials? And they have uh, success uh, factors because they're easily distributed. And for the cyber criminals, it uh, gives them a, re high, a very high return for investment. And it's very dis difficult to detect it, because info stealers work so as not to be detected. I don't want to bore you with that, but uh, let me tell you that the the blog of LACNIC. We wrote two articles on info stealers. I invite you to read it. Um, I don't want you to um, be distracted now. But I also want to tell you that uh, in those uh, passwords that are for sale in the black market uh, of LACNIC, 80% uh, are weak or very weak, only 20% are robust passwords. But the issue is not how robust the password has, is because info stealers will steal all the data. And if I have a strong or weak uh, password, it's the same because uh, they already have the credentials. So we need to strengthen that those passwords with some other authenticating factor. So, now, let me give you the scoop for the second season. Well, I'm also going to uh, go back again and remind you of what we discussed uh, in May. In May, we had uh, uh, told you of, of a plan of action, making it mandatory to have a second authenticating factor. The first thing that we said we would do was to conduct a survey. The aim was to see whether there were any impediments with the system as is to make it mandatory. If anybody saw any problems, if we didn't see any problems, we would move forward with a plan at, with two stages. First, for the medium and larger uh, members, and then for the smaller and the end users. In, uh, at the same time, we are working 
to systematize the alerts that we receive that Graciela told you about so that if your accounts have been vulnerated or they are at risk because your credentials are at sale uh, for sale, you should know it right away. And all this together with a communication campaign. The survey was conducted from in July and August from the Milaknik platform. We had a very good response rate. 270 people answered. Some of the relevant data, 77% of the people are aware of the possibility of this second authenticating factor in the platform, and 23% do not. So that uh, tells us that we need to continue to disseminate this. And fortunately, 93% considered that it is important to use it. 7% of the people don't. I invite you to talk to Graciela. Now, the uh, key objective of this survey is that nobody mentioned anything, any impediments, anything preventing people to, from, from using the second factor, nothing of that sort. We did receive some recommendations. We are working at that. We were recommended to include uh, sending codes via WhatsApp or email. Today, as a second factor, we can use third-party authenticators such as Google Authenticator or any uh, or password and others. We also have SMS and physical tokens such as the Shwiki. But here we are asked to incorporate WhatsApp and emails. We are also asked to use something that we knew we needed and we were working at, and that it, we needed a method to automatically recover the second factor, and I have activated my, because if I, if I have it activated, if I lose my mobile phone, I need to be able to recover it without having to call people at LACNIC. That would be a complication for the person who loses the mobile phone. And finally, we were also suggested to disseminate this further. Now, going to the results of uh, the information campaign, on the one hand, we disseminated it in the first event and then in many meetings uh, with members that we had uh, this year and uh, an email campaign, and we had very good results. In these six months, we went from 20% of uh, the our members with a second, an active second uh, authenticative factor um, to uh, uh, is 60 percent, and if we see for well for the medium and large uh, sized companies that do we, where we handle more resources and with that give, give way to uh, to today second 60 percent have uh, second uh, uh, authenticating factor. Uh, that's a very good uh, uh, rate, and it enables us to move forward in the uh, existing plan. What are we going to do? Starting on February 28, 2025, the second factor will be mandatory for all the medium uh, and uh, more than medium uh, members. And uh, starting in November 2025, it will be mandatory for everybody. I wanted to move forward because I wanted to tell you about the plan, but this goes hand in hand with a number of improvements that we are implementing that will be ready in uh, the first quarter of 2025. And that will give you a possibility to uh, recover the second factor automatically. We are evaluating to incorporating the WhatsApp code and some other improvements. So this is what I wanted to tell you. The second factor will be mandatory. We are doing very well with the plan that we had designed initially, and we are going to continue to uh, work with this. You will be receiving emails from us, and those who haven't enabled two-factor authentication, please do so prior to February when this will become mandatory. So back to Graciela, who has some comments to add. 
before repeating some of the best practices that are quite simple, allow me to say that it's not complicated. These are things that we can and have to apply in our daily activities, not only for access credentials to the systems where we manage confidential information, but also the information on our organizations, because that is maybe even more important than our own when we play a role in our organization. So this information is important for our organizations, and we have to protect that. One of the best practices that is not written here is that please do not download software unless it's original software, because one of the causes uh, why InfoStealers propagate so well is that people download things from sites that are not the official sites. So that is where many malware is, much of the malware is downloaded. And the economic benefit for InfoStealers is so big that they increased 6,000 percent over five years. This is an alarming number. So let us implement best practices which are so simple. It's like 2 plus 2 is 4. Don't reuse the same key in different platforms. Don't share your access credentials with other colleagues. Yeah. Or with family members. We often do so. <laughs> so whenever we can, let us establish different roles in the platforms so that keys that passwords are not shared. Let us use the, pa use the password managers. And if we think about robust passwords, new recommendations were issued regarding password manager, which I recommend you to read, those that are involved in password management. The password managers do make our lives easier, but once again, is it enough to have just one password? No, that's not enough. At LACNIC, we are making efforts to offer multiple authentication factors so that you can choose whichever you wish. You can choose one, two, or three. And one of these will be used as a two-factor authentication. But there are several options. This is quite an effort because we have to protect not only our information, but also the information of our organizations, of the resources that have been assigned to you. Maintain your systems updated. We have statistics at the CERT that correspond to Windows systems that have become obsolete for many years, and how can they be connected to the Internet? Monitor the compromise of the credentials in your organizations whenever possible. So this would be as simple as what I have just explained. And finally, <coughs> once again, call for action, use robust passwords, plus implement two-factor authentication in your systems, particularly in Milaknik. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there are no questions, allow me to make an announcement on another topic. Now that I have your attention, at LACNIC's booth, we have a QR code so that all the members can join in answering the satisfaction survey we carry out every two years. Your answers are very important, and this year specifically, this will be an input that we'll be using next year for the five-year strategic planning process. So please visit our booth, scan the QR code, and answer. This is anonymous, and these are directly processed by Merco Plus. Thank you. Thank you very much.